Ah yes, the familiar PlayStation info, white type on a black background, the polished branding sequence culminating in the cross square triangle circle iconography. It's Sony's handshake with the user, the introduction that inevitably leads us into a typically high quality piece of first party software. And yet, well, this is playing out on a Microsoft console, an Xbox. It's kind of strange, sort of wonderful, but at the same time unanticipated and even illogical. It's the kind of thing that Captain Kirk would bring out of the hat to make a megalomaniacal supercomputer self-destruct in 60s Star Trek, but here we are. A PlayStation Studios game running on Xbox consoles. This is MLB The Show 21, and here's the thing. I paid £75 of my own money to buy the cross-gen version of the game on the PlayStation Store. On the Xbox, it's part of my Game Pass subscription, where I can play it on any Xbox console I want. So how has this happened? This goes against everything we know about how Sony first-party studios operate, right? Well, I think it's fair to say that the intricacies of the deal are somewhat likely beyond us, but there is one important distinction that separates MLB from, say, Horizon Zero Dawn. PlayStation Studios are the developer, but it seems like it's MLB itself which is the publisher, and likely the driving force behind the transition of the game from being a PlayStation exclusive to going multi-platform. And assuming that this is the case, it's likely that Microsoft brokered the deal to bring the game on day one to Game Pass directly with MLB. For all we know, Sony may not have been involved at all. Still, this is the reality we're looking at here, and I thought it would be fascinating to see how a PlayStation Studio, specifically San Diego Studio, would leverage Xbox hardware, and of course, how the Xbox ports would compare to the PlayStation versions of the game. But it's important to stress that I'm not really a fan of baseball at all, and I can't really judge the quality of the game on those terms. So if you're looking for a more rounded review of MLB The Show 21, unfortunately, you'll need to go elsewhere. That said, I did see a tweet from Phil Spencer suggesting that Xbox lacked a serious baseball simulator. And assuming that MLB does the job for PlayStation, I'm confident in saying it will do the same for Xbox. In terms of features, content, everything, the game delivers wherever you want to play it. So here's the deal with MLB The Show 21, we're going to be looking at how the game looks and runs on the new wave of consoles. So we'll be stacking up the game on PS5 up against Xbox Series X. We'll bring in the Series S to see how that slots into the lineup. And beyond that, we're also going to be examining how the game looks running on PS4, Pro, and Xbox One X. Well, let's dig in. Series X and PS5, we're getting a native 4K resolution here. And while I saw occasional barely noticeable variations in perhaps filtering, I think I'm fairly confident in saying that MLB The Show 21 looks identical between the two systems. In fact, there's a lot of commonality in the game's visual makeup across the generations. It's a proper cross-gen release with only incremental gains when comparing, say, PS4 Pro to PS5 or Xbox One X to Series X. In the case of the new console flagships, it's the same geometry, the same textures, the same lighting, the same post-processing, the same everything, really. It's a pristine, 4K presentation, native, locked pixel grid, no dynamic resolution scaling. As for Xbox Series S, well, it will probably come as no great surprise to see the title operating at 1080p resolution. And actually, this opens up an interesting comparison with the other 4 teraflop machine in our lineup, PlayStation 4 Pro. Speaking of the Pro, and indeed Xbox One X, you can think of these versions as being mostly a match for the next generation experience. Again, it's the same geometry, very similar textures, nigh on identical effects work. But I did notice that post-processing didn't quite have the same precision of the next gen versions, while performance within gameplay was also lower. Resolution? Well, perhaps not surprisingly, uh, that takes a hit too. Looking at 1440p native on both PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, but in a plot twist, there's actually a quality selectable on both systems. You can actually choose between 1080p, 1440p, or even 2160p, obviously running at different frame rates. At this flexibility, it's not actually available on any of the next gen versions of the game. So my take on this is that yes, MLB The Show 21 is indeed a proper cross-gen title. Extra bells and whistles on Series X and PS5 amount to a higher resolution, 
fast loading times and an uptick in performance, but fundamentally every version of the game I played is kind of cut from the same cloth really. In that respect, don't expect to see the next generation features of the new hardware fully exercised. So we've talked about visual features, but let's move straight on to performance because the story here is certainly intriguing. MLB Show 21 has one frame rate cap, V-Sync. It'll top out at 60 frames per second, but it can often drop beneath that regardless of platform. Yup, even Series X and PS5 will drop frames. A lot of sports titles tend to target 60 FPS for gameplay, then limit performance to 30 FPS for the more graphically demanding cutscenes. Free for Soccer, pretty good example of this. But MLB The Show 21 is quite different. Cutscenes run unlocked, and whenever there's more than one player on screen or when lavish depth of field is deployed, frame rate tumbles from the target 60 FPS. Now let me be clear about this, when it comes to cutscenes, they are totally non-playable. They have little impact on the quality of the actual gameplay experience. And personally, I think the FIFA 30 FPS lock approach would possibly be better for this game. But as it is running unlocked, we can see how PS5 and Series X compare when the GPU is under heavy load. Story here is pretty clear. Some scenes show PS5 and Series X running with seemingly identical performance, but for the most part, Sony's machine runs with a clear frame rate advantage. When FPS dips on PlayStation 5, it dips harder on Series X, sometimes by anything up to 9, 10, 11 frames per second. So why it's differential, I didn't fully expect to see, but perhaps understandable, bearing in mind we're looking at a studio shipping its first Xbox title, and very early on in the generation two. I do think these tests are a little bit academic and perhaps more of an engine benchmark as opposed to being indicative of actual gameplay. So I also did a bunch of what you might call asynchronous analysis, just a bunch of non-matched capture from the full experience played on all five of the test consoles in this video. Zooming through gameplay here on PlayStation 5, you can see just how variable performance is thanks to those cutscenes, but it's the interactive bits that are most important. And bar some irregular drops, it's 60 frames per second, as it should be. But let's repeat that experiment with Xbox Series X. We've already established that the cutscenes and television-inspired camera angles cause a bigger hit to performance than we see on PlayStation 5. But the overall run of play as we push through the timeline at speed sees the same kind of variance we saw in the Sony machine. You're either at 60 frames per second or... or, well, you're not. The crucial thing, I guess, is that on the pitching and batting segments where frame rate is king, we're still mostly locked to 60 frames per second. What I will say, though, is that more frames generally are dropped here. It's not quite as stable as it is on PS5. Xbox Series S, as we've established, it's 1080p versus the native 4K we saw on the Series X. I did a similar bunch of like-for-like -like clips uh, just from the one game this time, but you can see how it all pans out. In most of the cutscenes, the X is 2 to 3 frames per second faster than the S, despite the yawning resolution divide. But there are some situations where the S can marginally pull ahead. I also did a gameplay capture for Series S, and the results there carry over pretty much as you would expect. The same massive variations according to cutscene or gameplay, but what is clear is that the lock to 60 FPS in the pitching and batting is less stable on the Series S than it is on PS5 or Series X. It's difficult to actually tell, mind you, because the vast majority of the scene is static, but the data is the data. In terms of the new consoles then, the overall pecking order is pretty clear and fairly predictable, I'd say, when you're looking at a studio transitioning from single format development to multi-platform for the first time, and very early on in the new console generation. It's when we look at the last-gen enhanced machines that we see the positions reverse, but perhaps the Xbox One X advantage you'd expect to see over PlayStation 4 Pro isn't as pronounced as you would expect, bearing in mind the big specs differential. Once again, comparing matched scenes, which are pretty much running with 100% matched content. Uh, you do get an Xbox advantage, typically 5 to 7 frames per second to the better on the One X up against PS4 Pro. And if we freeze frame here as we move from matched cutscenes to gameplay, well, there are a couple of takeaways here. Firstly, neither console sustains 60 FPS here in the way that the new wave of consoles do. Secondly, Xbox One X seems to retain that 5 to 7 frames per second advantage. So yeah, mid 50s plays late 40s, and that persisted into the more dynamic gameplay captures I did. 
But let's not forget that the last gen versions of the game actually have the quality modes that also affect frame rate. So yes, we could go up to 2160p and lower frame rate, or we could reduce resolution to native 1080p and increase performance that way. And yeah, again, we're going to be doing some time-lapse shots here, starting with the PlayStation 4 Pro. And you can see that it's pretty much on par with Xbox Series S, as you would expect, bearing in mind that they have very similar levels of GPU performance. And it's actually the same here as we take a look at Xbox One X, again running in that 1080p performance mode and yeah you can see that once again it's not a locked 60 frames per second by any stretch of the imagination but again once you get into those gameplay segments it does seem to be a really good if not completely perfect 60 frames per second interesting stuff and i do kind of wish that the next gen versions had similar functionality one thing I did notice though is that both last gen versions of the game are capable of stuttering on transitions between gameplay and cutscenes. Something that does seem to happen more often with Xbox One X. So that's MLB The Show 21 then. It's a contentious title in many respects because we literally have developers on Sony's payroll producing games for Xbox. And not only that, the game is available on day one out of the gate to any and all Xbox users subscribed to Game Pass. It's not likely a decision that was down to the developer at all, and I can't see Sony being delighted about the situation. But if it's the will of the publisher, kind of makes sense to me. The novelty of an ex-PlayStation exclusive appearing on Game Pass will see the title sampled substantially, and more people will be playing it, especially when Microsoft has been pushing the game so heavily with its marketing. As for whether the financials play out, I guess we'll have to see how Game Pass evolves in the months and years to come. This is a premium priced product that will likely go down well with sports fans. The only comment I have from a value perspective is that I was surprised to see a premium being charged for the cross-gen pack that includes both PS4 and PS5 versions. PlayStation 5 does get some sparing DualSense support that is lacking in equivalence on Xbox. It also gets 3D audio, but this did sound pretty similar to me through headphones on both systems. And there is faster loading. A 20 second wait to get into a game on PS4 Pro translates into 8 seconds on PS5 and about 12 on Series X. Initial boot is also a ton faster. But fundamentally, well this is a cross-gen release and the biggest improvements between the generations are resolution and performance. With that in mind, I felt that charging more for both versions in a single pack was a bit much. But that's where we are with MLB The Show 21, a fascinating cross-platform release. Uh, perhaps the exception to the rule in terms of first party development and certainly a remarkable battleground in terms of competing console business models. It's very much a sports purist game, so not really one I can really comment on beyond its technical attributes. But that's it. That's all I've got for you. Like, subscribe and share if you will and ring the bell for instant notifications when Digital Foundry content drops. The DF Patreon, as always, it's there for those that love what we do and want to get involved in our Discord, talking to the team directly, while also benefiting from pristine quality video downloads. But that's where I'm leaving things for now. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.